Hey guys, Zombie here, and welcome back to another Among Us video. This is the second video in the Tips and Tricks series, this time we're on Polis. Last video we focused on Mira HQ, which in my opinion is the most complicated map of all of them. But there are some unique tasks on this map where if you don't know what they are and you don't know how to complete them, they might give you a little bit of a hard time. So in this video, we're going to go over all the unique tasks, or at least the ones I found noteworthy. We're going to go over the sabotages the imposters can do, uh, the vents, as well as just some imposter strategy. Pretty similar to our last video on Mira. As you can see, I'm in office, so I'm going to head over to Dropship, which is where you'll normally spawn, and we'll get started from there. Before we get started though, please check if you're subscribed. According to the stats, over 98% of my viewers are not subscribed to the channel. I'm going to be making my third and final tips and tricks video for Skeld soon, as well as maybe some other videos on some more complicated imposter strategy or what to look out for as a crewmate to spot imposters better. I have a couple of ideas and I'd really like to have you back for those videos if you're interested in this kind of content. I've also been playing this game a lot on my Twitch, which I'll put on screen now and leave in the description below as well. I'll also leave my personal Discord as well as the Discord I use to find games for Among Us in the description. With all that out of the way, let's get started. Santa told me the kids that don't subscribe are going to get pushed into the lava pit this year instead of getting coal, so you might want to do that just to be safe. I don't know if Santa was serious. Alright, so here we are in Dropship. This is where you'll spawn in a normal game. I have a decent chunk of tasks, most of them are pretty short. Once again, I have my uh, cursor being captured, so I can show you, I can point at things, I can show you how I'm doing tasks, etc. So the first one's nice and easy, it's right here, it's a unique task to this map. You just take the key, one of these is going to be glowing, I'm not sure if it changes if I do this, it doesn't. Uh, you just put it in the keyhole and turn the key and you're good. Now I am familiar with common tasks and what they imply, but I just don't want to go over that in this video because I don't like when people use that as actual strategy and if, if it has high demand I'll make a separate video on common tasks, but I just don't want to go over that in this video. But I do know for those of you in the comments you might yell at me for that. Alright, so next up we're going to go to this Tesla coil right here. And these are fun. This is uh, basically it gives you a random maze, so if I go out and in it'll give me a different layout. And, you know, I can just keep, keep flipping, get different layouts. And essentially, you just want to bring the uh, little electric power over to the end. But the catch is, if you go the wrong way, you can't go back. Like, I can't, I can't bring this. I can't get out of that. I can only go into, you know, whatever. And then I'm stuck here forever. I have to let go and restart. Or if I, for whatever reason, I want to just refresh the maze, you can. I don't know why you'd want to do that, but you could. Maybe you see someone running at you, you want to get off and run away. Will you have enough time to run? If they're not, uh, probably not. But for whatever reason, if you want to let go, you can. Next up, we're going to go into communications. Uh, just like last video, this is one task I've never gotten in-game, but I have heard that people struggled with this, and it's, it's pretty simple. So if you've never seen this before, it's right here. It's to reboot the Wi-Fi. Basically, you just come up, you pull it down, and it says come back in 60 seconds. It'll also say that over here in the tasks menu. So then you just go and do whatever else. So we'll come back to this later. I'm going to come up to lab. It's going to look like in a minute I skip these tasks and walk past them. And that's because we're going to have to come back anyway. So just bear with me on that. Next up here we have the drill. Which for a while, me, me and my friends call this a rocket. But according to the task, it's actually a drill. If I can find it right here. Laboratory repair drill. Which makes sense now that I look at it, but anyway, it's pretty simple. You have these four red uh, squares on the corners. You just cl click each one four times, it'll get smaller each time. Be careful when you're going to each one, you don't accidentally click off because it will reset you. But overall, this is a very straightforward task. You just click each one four times, make sure you click inside the square, even after it gets smaller. Easy peasy. This is the second step of the Tesla coil. Once you complete the first step, it'll have you come over to this panel and just flip the switch for whatever node you had to fix. There's a bunch of different like Tesla coils around. Now we have this one. I don't know what it's actually called, but it doesn't matter. So you come up to this panel, right? And it says the log says six, six degrees and the reading is negative 14. So this is random that both of these are random. So I go out and back in. Now we have 11 and negative 40. And the objective is to make the numbers match. So obviously the first time we were within about 20 degrees, this time we're like 50 away, so I can just refresh. If, I, if, if it's way too far away, I can refresh till I get something more favorable. If this is only 22, 
In the long run, it's probably not worth to reset there, but it is an option and it is variable. So it could take someone longer than you or it could take someone shorter than you and they could still be crewmate or they could be faking it. You, you don't know, but that's not a consistent task where it'll always take the same amount of time. So that's something good to keep in mind. Now we have the telescope, which it'll give you a little, like a picture on the bottom right. I believe it changes if you switch, yeah. And you hear this beeping. Oh, oh, oh. It's basically telling you how hot or cold you are. So if I go this way, I'm getting colder. Warming up. And now I'm like right on it. And you hear it just start beeping really, really fast. It'll tell you if you're getting closer or further away. You just gotta listen for it. Or you can just look around until you find it. It's not that big of a area. So I'm gonna come down through decontamination. I'll go over scanning and, and the, the events and everything with and, and the imposter section of this video. Uh, because I'm gonna go, uh, it, it goes well with uh, imposter strategy on this map in my opinion. This is a very simple one down in Specimen. It reminds me of that game, or that, not a game, but like the puzzle when you're a kid where you have like the circle peg and there's like the circle hole and then there's the, the square and the triangle. It's basically like that, but like not, but it is. So that's pretty simple. There's also Simon Says and the click 1 through 10 in there. But that was the one unique task. So now I'm going to come back over through to O2, back to Com, and come up to these ones. Just because I want to end with these two anyway for crewmate. So we're going to head over here. Actually, we'll just go to comms now. It's been a minute. So basically after your minute is done... I, I would assume it's similar to Mira, to my understanding, if the round ends, like a dead body's called, or um, an emergency meeting is called, the timer drops to zero automatically. I might be mistaken on Mira, and if I'm mistaken on Mira, I'm also mistaken here, but 60 seconds is uh, goes pretty quick in this game, so you shouldn't probably won't have a hard time. And then essentially you just take it from the bottom, you put it back to the top, you give it like six seconds to run through its boot up, and then you're done. Very simple. I know some people uh, are quite confused about I've heard people confused in games I've played. Uh, I I don't know. So that's uh, it's pretty straightforward once you know how it is. So over here in oxygen, there's this tree. There's this like monitor on the tree that's tracking different, uh, you know, carbon dioxide, nutrient. I guess that's nutrients, uh, radiation and water. Very simple. You just drag the lines over to the corresponding lines. It's not incredibly precise, but you see like here, it's it's not quite. If I bring it up ever so slightly to about here, it, it it's not terribly precise, but if, if you, you can touch it and not have it close enough. So, but very simple overall, just to keep that in mind. This is probably my favorite task on the entire map. So you, you'll come in and you'll see this. The only thing you have to do is click and drag down It'll fill up, and then you take it and you just throw it away. So you're just pulling down and like clicking and pulling down and clicking and pushing right. You don't have to pull it to the left, it'll do it automatically, it'll fill up and you just throw that away. It's very satisfying, I like that one a lot. Down here are two I don't get too often, you have this water jug. You just hold it down to fill it up and then we'll have to go over to office to refill the water jug over there. Then there's these two wheels. You, you spin them counterclockwise until they stop moving. Eventually they lock. Like right now, I can't spin anymore. But it just wants you to wait for the thing, to, for the water to fill up. I bet if you go slow, like it's still going, but you see how slow that is. So if you just you just bring it all the way, and it'll fill up, you know, within a few seconds. Pretty simple. Just don't know how to spin it. Both of them are counterclockwise, and the third one we're about to do is also counterclockwise. So that's just something to note. You don't have to remember this one goes clockwise, this one goes counterclockwise. All three of them go counterclockwise, nice and simple. Again, it takes a few seconds. Great. Honestly, here and over in the other room with the, the water room with the jug and the wheels, great places to get killed. But again, I'll go over that more in a minute. So we take the water we got from the jug in the other room. We fill this bad boy back up. And now we only have the two left over here. So we have a QR here. So basically you take your QR, you scan it for your free taco at Taco Bell, and you're all set. And then we have the lava pool, which is the, pretty much the same as the, the one we did over there, except this time we're going up instead of down. That's something else good to note. On this one, you'll, your log number will always be less than the reading. You're always clicking up here. And on the one up here, the one that's you know, the, the cold one, your log number will always be above the reading. So on the other one, you'll always be hitting down. So your instinct, just walk up and just you know which one you're trying to hit. 
Okay. You, you, you'll know if you're going up or down based on which one you're at. It'll always be up on this one, always be down on that one. Easy peasy, takes a few seconds. It's a little bit variable, but that's about it. Uh, so I'm gonna switch over to imposter now, and because I don't have to cut, I guess we'll just do it like this. So on this map, we don't have the same ability with the vents as we do on Mira. There's a few different vent connections. They're not all connected. So there's this triangle right here. You have storage, you have office, and you have right outside of comms and weapons. That's your first triangle. Also, uh, I'll, I'll put up a... i do it right now, actually. I'll put up a map of all the different vent connections, but I'll also show them now. Uh, so that that's... If you want to pause and take a look at it, screenshot it wherever you want. So this is the next one we have right outside of office. This is the wall of admin, but this is the door of office. It'll bring you into admin, just through the wall, all the way up to outside laboratory by this Tesla coil and the lava reading, and then into the bathroom. This is a pretty, uh, this area in particular is a pretty hot area to get kills and have people vent away. The second to last one is right here, which usually you'd be jumping into this vent. Uh, and I'll go over why in a minute, but these vents only go to each other, right by each reactor, so you can kind of see where I'm going to go with that in a minute. And the final vent loop, or vent triangle, or I guess they're not all triangles, but the vent connections are right here by comms, just outside uh, electrical and like O2, but it's in the corner. Like this is closer to comms than it is to really any of these. This is kind of in no man's land, other than the... The little Tesla coil, and then inside oxygen uh, by the tree. So th that's the last one. On this map, we have a few different sabotage options. There's comms, which I didn't even touch on in the last video, because I've never seen anyone use comms unironically. So we have really reactor, and we have lights. So lights are lights. Are lights. lights are great. So if you're doing lights, this is the area people are going to come to. So I'll go over where I like to use lights in a minute. And then there's also Reactor, which I'm not going to set off this video just because I don't want to deal with the beeping and having to wait for it. But you have one here, and you have one right over here. So, same thing as, you know, as always, you have to have one person here and one person there to turn off the Reactor. Something as crewmate I sometimes do is wedge myself behind. You can still be seen, but I'm thinking if an imposter is running by, I'll probably run to, like, here... I mean, they might see me, they might not. They might only come to here, no one's standing here. They'll probably still see you, but especially in dire situations with four people left and there's, you know, one imposter or there's, you know, if you're in a bad spot, maybe what, maybe it'll win you a game, who knows. But a lot of people like to come over to the med bay area and a lot of people like to go literally anywhere else. So on, But on this side, it's really isolated. As you know, the only way over here is through this one, you know, this, this passage right here outside of electric. And there's nothing else here. So this is a kind of isolated area. Uh, and if the crewmates aren't aware of this, you can capitalize as an imposter. And what I mean is, let's say you're over here, it's you and a, one crewmate and that's it. No one else is coming or, you know, you, you kind of waited for a second. No one appeared to be coming. The camera's off and no one's on the camera, which you can tell, by the way, because if you're looking at this camera, you'll see them flashing red if someone's in comms looking at the camera. So right now, obviously, no one's looking at cameras. It's you and one other person. You can pretty easily come up here, either let them do it or if they're waiting for you to do it, you can just kill them and then do it assuming someone's on the other one and then you run away good crewmates will check this after a reactor is called just to see if someone died so usually what an imposter will do to prevent walking out here into a pretty heavy intersection where if someone's coming up to do the reactor or do whatever someone's coming from this one to check this side you can just jump in and then really you won't be able to jump out for a bit because if people are coming off of this you can't get out and then people are coming to check over here you're going to end around an event not the end of the world it just might look bad especially if you're later in the game with fewer people they might ask where you were you have to come up with some sort of story but that's part of the game so i'm sure you'll be able to uh come up with something hopefully here is the uh probably the play i see the most and we we as a group the people who i play with especially the the few of us who are, are, you know, 
play this game pretty competitively, like we take it pretty seriously, even though we shouldn't, but we do because it's fun for us, is at the beginning of the game, you see a lot of, at least I in my group, see a lot of people come straight over to this Tesla coil if they have it, and then into med bay either to do the drill, to do, if they did another Tesla coil, they can, you know, do flip their switch, they can do this, they can do telescope, there's, there's a task here, and then there's scanning. And on this map, I've noticed a lot of people get scans, which uh, is a way to confirm someone as a crewmate, which I'll probably end up making a video on at some point. And the reason that's uh, dangerous to you as an imposter, just briefly, is basically anyone who sees them scan knows they're a crewmate, and that's it. Like, they're they're just confirmed. There's not even a question they are a crewmate. A, an imposter can't scan, because they, they can't perform tasks. So what a lot of uh, people do, so if I'm scanning, because as crewmate, you know, I get it a lot. Most crewmates get scanning a lot on this map. If I'm scanning here, and let's say, you know, I'm an imposter and my vision's massive right now, but even in a game as an imposter, my vision probably wouldn't be this big, but you can't edit vision free play. Uh, you might have, usually you can see to about here, the furthest, even as imposter, as, as a crewmate, maybe you see to here, uh, at least on the settings we play with. So if you have four people right here and two are, are imposters, or assume, well, I wouldn't be on the scanner if I'm an imposter, but let's say there's two imposters, two crewmates, one of us turns off the lights, quick double kill, we, and then we just run over to, uh, then both of us run over to electrical, or, or even if we just run away, which might not be the greatest idea, but if you run right to electrical, it's a great place for a double kill. This this arrow is just telling me, go do the lights, but because we're an imposter, it doesn't, it doesn't really affect us at all, so I'm not going to bother. Or if there's just two people here, you and someone scanning, you hit the light, just come in and kill, and then go. This is something that I've known as a good strategy for a while. A lot of my buddies picked up on this. I've talked about how this is a good strategy in that Sometimes as a crewmate, I won't even go for the light. I will run towards the light because I never. If I'm on the scanner and the lights go down, I immediately X out or click off and run away because this this is the area they'll probably try to kill you round one with lights going out. Lights is almost always the first uh, sabotage among uh, good imposters on this map because so many people come over here. So what I'll do sometimes as crewmate to prevent this is you can potentially, I mean, it looks bad, but this, this is also a task, but you can hide in this corner, lights go down, or, I mean, they might see you run in. So usually what I would do is just hop off if I'm on, or if I'm over here, I'll immediately run out, do something like this. And then once I'm about here, I'll turn back. Because if there is a killer, odds are someone stayed, and odds are they already killed them. So you can, I mean, even if you can't see, you'll probably catch someone coming through here, unless they're smart and they go up or down. But even so, you have to keep note of who's here when you run away or when the lights are going down, because then you can come back. Also, if you're running this way and you see someone run up and through, which again, doesn't necessarily mean they're an imposter, but I've made a lot of reads in round one and called both the imposters for that exact reason. Lights go down, one person's already here, this person comes up, other person doesn't come to do lights, and then maybe one person died, maybe no one died, but usually it, it, it's pretty bad. It's a bad look to get caught going that way regardless of whether you're crewmate or imposter. I spent a lot of time on this, but I think this is one of the most powerful plays as uh, as an imposter and the counterplay as crewmate on this entire map, in, in my opinion. Of course, you have a uh, specimen room where if you have people in here, you can always set the reactors off where specimen really can't make it to these in time, or if they do, it'll be in the last few seconds. So if it's you as an imposter and one other in specimen, you can always set off the reactors, send everyone over there, get a kill, go on your merry way. Even if you want to go and hit the button, they don't, I mean, at least in my group, they don't expect you to hit the button if you're an imposter. You can say you, you were in specimen, you came through, uh, you saw reactors going off, but because you were in specimen, you weren't going to make it. You come over here, you check vitals, you saw someone was dead. Actually, I've realized, I'll go over vitals in a second here. You saw someone dead on vitals, you came and hit the button. Did anyone see this person? Blah, blah, blah might be a decent strategy. So let me go over vitals. I haven't touched on this yet. This is like the gimmick like comms in Mira, where it's you know another way of gaining information. So because I'm just playing with bots, I'm pink and then there's four bots. But if I, let's say I kill dummy one who's red, if you go up to vitals, you see red, is, it says red's dead. So, and, it, and, and then if they, they're dead on a previous round, it'll just say DC, which uh, even if they didn't leave the game, It'll still say DC if they're dead. 
it'll only say dead and be red if they died during that round. So this is a good, decent way of getting information. However, I personally don't like taking that and hitting the button. I like to find where the body is. Uh, sometimes someone will just run hit the button about this. Sometimes, you know, maybe you'll be looking for the body and you get killed looking for it. That's just kind of how it goes. Uh, there's, of course, the game's going to vary with who you play with and what tasks you get, who got imposter, and, you know, how well they can talk out of situations, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is probably the most in-depth I'll go for now. There's other general tips and tricks I might go over in another video. Uh, if you haven't seen my Mira HQ uh, tips and tricks video, I would definitely suggest that one. I think this map is much easier than that one, so... If you're struggling at all with uh, with this map, I would definitely check out that one, because I feel like that one's even more complicated. Uh, I, I'll do Skeld soon. Skeld is probably going to be a shorter video, just because there's only two unique tasks. I'll go over vents, I'll go over basic strategy, but I think that one's going to be relatively short. This one's on the longer side, so I appreciate you hanging out with me today. Uh, for any of you watching in the very near future, like right now it is August 22nd, it's Saturday. This will probably go up tomorrow, the 23rd. My uh, my semester starts on the 24th, on Monday, so this only really applies if someone's watching in the first, like, week, but my schedule's gonna get more busy, so I'll try to pump out videos as best I can, but they might slow down a little bit, but that's, that's life. But I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe if you enjoy this game and want to see more, and if you have ideas for future videos that I haven't mentioned, uh, put them in the comments below, or even if you liked an idea I mentioned, like how to spot uh, an imposter better, or what, what signs they might give, to tip that they're they're an imposter that you might be able to pick up on. If there's anything I mentioned that you think you would like to see or would like to know more about, definitely let me know because it'll help me decide what to make in what order. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be it for me for now. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you in another video. And until then, see you soon.